Hi, I'm Jerry Pinto and you're watching me on Talkative Titbits. I think it is entirely possible to make a living out of creative writing and to pay your way through it. But you've got to decide whether you want a life or you want a lifestyle. If you want a lifestyle, which generally means you want a car, you want a two bedroom house of your own, you want to travel abroad every year, you want to buy branded clothing. And these are not bad. These are things that people want and they're normal to want them because society, I think, has made that normal. If you want these things, it might be difficult to have creative writing as a profession and fulfill those wants. But if you say to yourself, you know, I'm perfectly happy with cast off clothes, with clothes that my richer cousins can give me. I'm happy to eat at home. I'm happy to take buses and trains. I'm happy to live a simple life. Then you'll probably be able to get up every morning and decide, I'm going to write. I'm going to write all day. And at the end of the day, I will take it. I will take what it brings me. And I have the feeling that you'll be looked after. You'll generally be looked after, It'll, you won't starve because there's always a way to make some money. It's not easy, but is it possible? Of course it is possible. The point is how much do you want it? Where do you want it from? Do you want it from some part of your head? Do you want it from your heart? Do you want it from some deep part of your gut where you will do what it takes to get that creative writing career? That's what you've got to decide. I can't decide it for you. I can only tell you that it is easier to do something that you want so badly. It is easier to give up other things. But if you don't want it so badly, hey, you know, having a, a fun vacation in Thailand, buying a new shirt, these are also life's joys. And you should not deprive yourself of life's joys unless the joy of creative writing just completely trumps those. Today we think, oh, blogging has come up and journalism and, you know, everybody is writing and there are posts and there is SMS language and writing is under attack. Writing has always been a very schizophrenic kind of thing. Now that decision about whether you're going to bring craft to the average act of communication is yours alone. And it is a decision that we make every single day and every single time we start to write. For the writer, there is no choice. The choice is that you will write well, as well as you can, with as much care as you can, each time that you write. Because each time that you write, you know that your name is going with that message. And that means that you are sending out an ambassador of your writing skills to the world. But you're still a writer and you will still do a good job. And there are other people who don't want to be writers. They just want to express an opinion. They want to say, you know, Oh my, OMG, this is terrible. And then they'll put a link and that'll be done. And they'll think they've written. That's fine. It's acceptable. It's all right. They're not claiming to be writers. There are other people who will write badly and claim to be writers. That's not so fine. That's not so acceptable. But writing is integral. It is central to the human experience. It is not going to go away because there are bad writers. But you will be able to see the decay of a society based on how badly it uses language. I'm Orwellian in that way. I believe what Orwell said, that where language decays, society decays as well. So I'd say to everybody who's using language as much as possible, be clear, be simple, be concise and try to tell the truth as you see the truth. Because that is the way forward, I think, for everybody. And if you're lying, then lie well. <laughs> English has a very peculiar and bizarre reputation in India because it was the colonizer's language. And as the colonizer's language, it, it's like a, it's left behind, right? In, in India. Second, the problem is also that Eng English is a language of power all over the world. Third, it's a killer language. It's a language that is taking away our bhashas, it is taking away our home languages, you know, people are speaking it at home. So it has a bad rep. Now poetry itself has a, has a, pro has a problematic space in the in. So 
uh, I think Arvind Krishna Merotra, the great Indian poet in English, put it well when he said, uh, Indian English poets are the Dalits of poetry. To write a biography, I think you have to love the person and want to tell their story. It must be something that, because what you are doing at that point in time is you are giving up your story. You are giving up the many other things that you could be doing to tell their story. Most people will buy a biography, not because of the writer who's written it, but because of the subject of the biography. So if tomorrow I'm writing a biography of an actor, it's the actor's fans who will buy the biography. Most of them want to read about the actor that you're writing about stay with the actor. I'd say that to everybody. Stay with the biography. And if you're writing a biography, do not try to imagine it. You can only work with what you've got. Because you're telling someone in a biography, this is what happened. In a, in a fictional recreation, you know, that's fine. You're, you're doing your stuff. Label it fiction, say it's a novel, a novel based on the life of, of the painter or the poet or the politician. Yeah, sure. Okay, got it. We know it's a novel. You're telling me that this is a biography, then I want to believe it happened and it happened exactly that way. That's where I come in on the deal. That's where I think the reader comes in on the deal. And to start by inventing things is to muddy the waters. I think the question I'm being asked is because I wrote a novel called M in the Big Home, which is based largely on my life. And I would say that there's only one thing that I was worried about, which was, do am I hurting people whom I care about? And I think that's one thing you should be careful about. You should, I don't think any book is worth hurting people whom you love. There may, may be other people who will take offense at your book and whatnot. That's a different matter that you've got to deal with separately. I'm saying you have a mother. You're writing about your mother. Is she going to be hurt? I'm not saying then you should not write about her. I'm saying you have to know that when someone gets hurt, you're responsible and you have to own that responsibility. That's all. After that, how you deal with the guilt, how you deal with, the, with what happens, those are the outcomes of living, of any choice in, li in life. There are going to be positive outcomes and negative outcomes, right? And so you've got to say to yourself, I'm, prepare yourself for the negative outcomes and say, okay, for me, this works because the positive outcomes outweigh the negative outcomes. That's your, your decision at each point in time. Welcome to adulthood. Each time we get decisions to make, which can be based on advice. You can ask people, you can talk to people, but eventually you will own it. And you will not get a pass by saying, so-and-so told me it's okay. I would say, get real. Suppose your, your cook came to you and said, I have cook's block. I cannot cook today. You'd say, no, I'm really sorry. You go into the kitchen and cook. That's what you're paid for. If you're a writer, you're paid to write. The universe pays you to write. You write. Write badly if you want. Write rubbish if you want. You know it's rubbish, write it. But you will find as you're writing it, Something will loosen up. Something will start moving inside you. You will get to open water. If you're in the middle of the ice, you will get to open water, but not by standing still. You have to push through the ice. You have to be an icebreaker and suddenly you're out into the open water and suddenly you're writing again. But you will not beat writer's block by saying, I am blocked. I can't write. You will beat writer's block by saying, I am blocked. I cannot write the way I want to, but I will write anyway. And I will keep on writing, sometimes for a week, badly. And then eighth day, you'll break out and you'll come through. But you will not come through without those seven days of constant labor. So as far as writer's block goes, when it comes, recognize it, ignore it, write on. This idea that attention spans are shortening, is really about the fact that there are many, many more things to be interested in and people therefore tend to have dispersed attention. But when they are interested, they will read huge quantities. No one prefers to read 30 word stories. Imagine if you're telling your best friend some gossip, okay? You're telling her something that happened last night at a party. You think she wants only 30 words? 
She wants the goss. She wants all the details. Okay, she wants to know everything. What was she wearing? What did he say? What did he say? Was he in the room? Did he say it? everything she wants to know, right? Because she wants everything. Why does she want everything? Because she's interested. We can create attention spans simply by creating interest. So if the person wants 30 words, only wants 30 words out of you, that's your failure, not the person's. When you are reading something you want to read, the number of words never matters to you. I would say the first, to begin with is do not be terribly anxious about being published. It is entirely likely that you might be writing fairly inadequate stuff right now. This does not mean you will always be writing inadequate stuff, but there are very, very few baby geniuses who write their first piece and everyone says, my God, that's a masterwork. It doesn't happen very often. Okay, so park the desire to be published. I know it's very difficult. I wanted to be published at the age of 15. I thought I could write a novel. I got published first at the age of 32 or something. It was difficult waiting all those years, but I'm glad I did. The second thing I think is you have to work on riyaz, the very simple thing of doing it every day. Just write every day. So you say, what do I write about? Take one person and try and describe them fully. Take one incident in your class that happened in your class and write dialogue around it. Try to ask questions about people. Try to imagine situations where someone falls in love with someone else. You set yourself interesting problems and solve them by writing. And you'll find that, that eventually, suddenly, one day, you're writing much, much better than you ever did. Much better. Just because of the riyas. Writing will be like that. It will become easier. It will become more effortless, but only if you put in the work that is required. I wish you all the best. Put in that work.